Hi guys, it's Andy from Man City Fan TV and welcome to this latest episode 11 of Man City Fan TV podcast and uh, this week we've got uh, Martin, how are you buddy? I'm not too bad today actually, for a Monday anyway. Very good and uh, we've invited Carl back on, Carl in Washington DC, so how's DC Carl and how are you? Happy New Year. Happy New Year Andy, Happy New Year guys. Um, It's great in DC. Uh, it's it's about three four degrees centigrade today, but uh, today's a bank holiday, so we are uh, we're extremely happy to be home today. Well, you said it's Martin Luther King Day. That is correct. That is correct. So mm-hmm. we're glad to celebrate that and uh, be at home today. And they just give you one day. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, listen, enjoy it, and uh, thank you for coming on this latest podcast. So, what we're going to do, the uh, structure for this one is we're going to review the Villa game quickly because uh, we didn't do the podcast last week. Uh, low, it's busy, busy time of the year. So, uh, we're going to quickly review the Villa game. Uh, outstanding performances by several players. Then we'll look at the Palace Palace game in particular, the two-two draw. Uh, we're then going to have a Brief chat on uh, centre-backs and where City stand. And then uh, finally, we'll finish on the golden question like we always do. So, I'm going to take you back. Uh, it seems ages ago now, but that was the uh, Villa 1, Manchester City 6. And uh, looking at the team, I'll quickly recap the team. We had Edison in net. We had Cancelo at right-back, John Stones and Fernandinho at centre-backs and Ben Mendy at left-back. In the centre, we had uh, Rodri holding with Kevin De Bruyne and uh, David Silva. Um, Up front, we had Riyad Mahrez playing on the right, Sergio Aguero up front, and Gabby, this time, unusually, playing on the left. So, uh, I'm going to come to you first, Carl. Uh, What what were your initial thoughts of the starting lineup playing with Mahrez, Aguero and Gabby, and what were your thoughts on the performance? At the moment, I saw Gabby... Aguero and Mares, I knew it was going to be a five six goal game. How do I know that? Because every time they play together, start together, it's always five more five or more goals. It's simple. So I, I don't understand why Guardiola won't keep playing the three of them, at least the two of them, together. Because anytime they play together, Liverpool, five nil, Palace, five nil, Watford, six nil, uh, Huddersfield, six nil. You name it. Anytime they play together, it's a st- it's a f- magnificent performance. Yeah. I, I, I don't understand why he won't play these people together. Because what Gabby, Gabby seems to come alive when, when, when he's playing with Aguero. He seems to thrive off playing with Aguero. He moves in, moves out, switches positions. He's really dynamic and really good. Ooh. Remember in the, the Centurion season with, against Watford? They played the exact same way. The movement, the passing, it was phenomenal. Why won't he keep playing them together? I don't, well, um, when you put it like that, I mean, watching the game, uh, Gabby, Aguero wasn't a standard striker uh, because he was dropping deep and Gabby was moving in behind the back of him. And uh, yeah, it was uh, it was one of those you looked at and went, OK, here we go. He's finally sort of, you know, City fans have been calling for Gabby to play on the left because of the way he plays for Brazil. He did it. We won 6-1. Uh, Martin, you were at Villa Park. Uh, yeah, I was. What was uh, what were your thoughts when the team came out and uh, the performance? Me and my mate who went down, we said we were so happy with that that team because, as Carl says, why we don't play that more often is a mystery. Well, it's not a mystery in terms of why we don't because I think it's um, modern football now. The age of two strikers is, is dead. It's dead. No one plays it anymore. Um, I think they all go with this number 10 role with the one striker and the two two wide men. Um, but to me, that is the best we've played all season. Do I think people said to me, oh, because Villa, Villa were a poor team and everything else. Now, you've got to remember, Villa are scrapping for their lives. Yeah. And we went to their ground and you could tell within the first five or ten minutes we were up for it. We were we were bang up for that, bang up for it, and it, it, the passing, everything. Rod, I, I can't tell you a player who played bad in that game. Mm-hmm. I can't tell you one. Mm-hmm. Well, we uh, <laughs> well, Mares opened the scoring on eighteen minutes. He then got a second on twenty four, and then Sergio 
got his goal on 28 and then Gabby sort of made it 4-0 at half-time. What were your thoughts going in at half-time, 4-0 up, and what were your thoughts on the fact of Mara scoring two, Aguero on the goal sheet and Gabby scoring as well, considering what you said before, Cal? I think the key to that game, Villa game, especially for Mahrez, was he didn't play as an out-and-out right, right, right winger. He played almost like an inside right, inside forward on the right. And whenever he does that for Leicester, he did it for Man City, he's absolutely unstoppable. When he, he goes or comes in from the right, dribbles through, he's absolutely unstoppable. So having that trickery is, to me, is, is always beneficial. And having the fact that you can have Gabby and Aguero switch positions, dropping deep, dropping forward, confuse Villa. Then Kevin was on point. Rodri was fantastic in making those interceptions. David Silva was on point. Everybody was just working as a team. So, you know, after 4 0, I was like, man, this, this, this is going to be one of those games where we could score seven or eight. Yeah. And in the second half, they kind of stepped off the gas a little bit. But then, you know, I guess Gundo made a mistake and they conceded one goal. And Aguero was really pissed with that. But it was a good performance. It really, I, I was hoping that we would do the same thing this week. Well, uh, De Bruyne got a rest. He, he came off after 63 minutes. Foden came on and Rodri came off for Gundogan on 71 uh, with also Otamendi sort of replacing Fernandinho who was on a yellow card at the time. Um, Aguero, Martin, uh, second half, 57, <laughs> yeah. 81. Another hat-trick. Uh, we're running out of superlatives for this player, aren't we? I said it last night on my live vlog. Best striker ever in the Premier League. Best striker ever in the Premier League, and it would. And unfortunately, you know, I mean, unfortunately, not unfortunately for us, but unfortunately, he plays in a blue shirt, so he'll never get the credit. He'll never get the the honours that he deserves uh, because he is in a in a city shirt. In a city shirt, uh, city shirt. Unfortunately, right. That okay. Well, I'll, I'll jump in while you're stumbling over your words there. Um... <laughs> <laughs> the um, we, we've had this debate has gone on all last week, and that is uh, you just said Sergio Aguero, the best Premier League striker ever. Um, he overtook Thierry Henry. He's already overtaken the amount of hat tricks for uh, the Alan Shearer, uh, the record he held. Um, but he is way off uh, so far. Wayne Rooney's goals uh, is way off Alan Shearer's goals. Uh, in Premier League history, though both of those players have, have played significantly more. Um, to play devil's advocate, Carl, uh, if I turn around and said, yeah, no, but he's played 200 games less, but you still got to score the goals, how can Aguero possibly be classed above the likes of Alan Shearer and Wayne Rooney? What's your argument to that? The game's the goals ratio. There's nobody, nobody beats him, period. What? Well, OK, my argument back to that would be, yeah, but if he played another 200 games, what's to say that he'd have the same goals to games ratio? I can, I, I'll just tell you, look at data science behind it and then just do the forecast. If somebody's had a better goals against ratio than anybody else and you project that out, common sense tells us that it's going to be more than Alan Shearer and Ray Rui. It's simple. If I, if, I, if I come into the Premier League next season and I play 20 games and I score 18 goals, then I overtake Sergio Aguero on that, on that sort of basis. Yeah, but then let's look at the past four or five years. What's it? What's it been for you? What's it been for Sergio Aguero? If you, you, know, you take when well, you take the sample size over time, he has the best goals against ratio in the Premier League ever. Right? Oh, he, hey, listen, you don't have to convert me. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 for me, he is the best. To, but, you preach, you preach right, to you the take, converted, yeah. yeah, but I mean, it's it's one of those that this the, these are the arguments that have come right. up over, yeah, over the last you, week. You, you know, take that sample size and you project it out another two or three years. Okay, it may drop ten or fifteen percent, but you still have more goals than Shearer and more goals than Rooney. Yeah. Well, I mean, where did Wayne Rooney start at sixteen? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you only have to look at how many goals Aguero scored in his career. If you would take his uh, Independiente Atletico goals on top of that, I mean, he's he's what at three hundred and is it fifty, sixty, something like that already. Yeah. Uh, and if he's got sixteen months left on his contract at City, I still think he can break uh, Rooney's record. And uh, yeah. whether it, whether he'll break, yeah, I don't think he'll break Shearer's record, but. The argument you get from some in the media that who talk a lot of golf is the fact that, oh, um, if uh, Shearer and Rooney are playing in a team like Man City, if they have the chances, they'll probably score more. You know, yeah. that, that, that's the argument that they that they always try to make. Um, but then I remember when Aguero was in a team when Kevin De Bruyne wasn't there, right? He was still scoring. Yeah. Goals. So, 
Well, you only have to you only have to look at the players Rooney played around. You only have to look at the players Alan Shearer played around for Newcastle, that attacking Newcastle team, that Blackburn team as well. All right, he did score quite a few goals for Southampton, but you know he played around some very, very, very gifted players. You know David Genoa, Tino Espria, yeah. you know players yeah. like that. You know, so I don't buy into that. Look at well, oh, City have got De Bruyne and the, you know David well, Silva. I wonder if you, if you add the, his goals from Atletico de Madrid when he played for them and won the Europa, Europa League, I wonder what uh, his goals or goals, goals game ratio would be like. So if you add that to his career, his, his body of work, I guarantee you, man, this guy was, this guy was, but, but they won't do that. They won't, because he wears a blue shirt, they won't do that, right? They won't, they won't look at it from that perspective. Yeah, like, probably not. Um, do you agree with Carl Martin, Sergio Guerrero? I think you said he's the best ever. Hands down. Hands down. And I say that you got to remember, this is Sergio Aguero who came from um, a different league. Yep. He came, didn't speak a word of English. I, I, and, and we all know the story that he, he he does still pretend that he doesn't know a word of English. Yeah. So he doesn't have to do any interviews. He's also yeah. a very clever boy. Um, he speaks perfect English. Um, but, you know, Wayne Rooney has grown up in this country. Alan Shearer, one of the greatest ever strikers, you know, to have a grace football pitch. Totally different players as well. Alan Shearer scored a lot of goals with his head, lots of goals, right foot, left foot. Aguero, for me, does a lot more off-the-ball work. Yeah. And that's and the thing is with Aguero is he's changed his game so many times under so many different managers. You know, under Mancini, he was a natural goal scorer. Changed it a little bit under Pellegrini and changed it again under Pep. Because as we all know, Pep doesn't like a natural just out and out striker. Yeah. You have to be able to go back and do the dirty stuff. And for him at the age of twenty seven, twenty eight, or however old he was, to change his game completely like he had to. Because if you remember, there was rumours that he was out the door when Pep came. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, if you go back to if you you, you said before about if you want to take a snapshot of his previous clubs, Carl. Well, yeah. in the Independiente when he was a baby. Uh, 56 appearances, 23 goals. Uh, for Atletico, 234 appearances, 101 goals. Um, for, for City, 360 appearances, 251 goals. So, totally, career total so far, 650 games, 375 goals. 375 goals. Uh, which is absolutely, you know, phenomenal. Um, so, for me, he, he is the best, um, without a shadow of a doubt. People will argue all day long. It's all, it's all subjective because you know what, what, what's the parameters and how, you, how do you measure it? But uh, for me, I agree with you. You have to, you have to think also in total. I just said three hundred and seventy odd goals, seventy five goals for Sergio Aguero. In six six hundred and whatever it was, I said, um, Wayne Rooney seven hundred thirty one games, three hundred and six goals. Yeah, hey, and the scary thing is, he didn't have a great record three months ago. Like I said, he, he'd gone eight or nine games in the league and hadn't scored a single goal. Yeah. So he does have these droughts, but the trouble is, he'll come back four games later and bang three, six, you know, nine goals in straight away. And we all know we all know that he does like Christmas off as well. So there you go. <laughs> well, 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 just 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 on that, uh, obviously because we discussed Alan Shearer, Alan Shearer's played 734 games, 379 goals. To that that that's his total. Um 379 379, okay? Sergio Aguero yeah, and that's in 734 games. Sergio Aguero has played 650 games and scored 375. There you go. There well, you go. I'd love to know his goal ratio for Argentina. His Argentinian career, 97 games, 41 goals. There you go. Again, just, again. So, so the trend behind all this, Andy and, and Martin, is the fact that consistency, goals to games, is, uh, is consistent across his whole career. Yeah, it's absolutely. A, and it's not a Premier League thing. Across all his career, his goal to good games ratio is consistent. And that's a data point that can't can be disputed. Now, yep. I like Alan Shearer. I think, I think Alan's fantastic. I really enjoy him playing you know, when I was much younger. I think he's great. 
the only reason why Aguero doesn't get the recognition that he deserves is because he doesn't play for, for the red side of Merseyside and doesn't play for Salford. Okay. That's the only reason why. I agree. Anyway, moving on. That was a great 6-1 victory. And we uh, we went to the weekend, which was a Saturday, 3 o'clock kickoff for the first time in God knows how long. So it seemed really weird turning up at the Etihad, at, you know, well, about midday, but, you know, we... I forgot to do this one. <laughs> yeah, we've got to do this one, I'm afraid. And that was Man City versus Crystal <coughs> Palace. And for those who were... Uh, all over social media going, look at your empty seats, look at this. There were 54,439 there. I think there were 650 empty seats, and most of those were in the Palace end. Um, so it was a great crowd uh, on Saturday. The, the lineup: Edison, Cancelo kept his place, John Stones and Fernandinho and Benjamin Mendy. This time, Rodri was rested and Gundogan came in ahead of him with the same, same pairing as... Uh, the Villa game, which was Kevin De Bruyne and David Silva. This time, Mares was put on the bench uh, and he played uh, Raheem Sterling on the left, Aguero up front, and this time, uh, Gabby was on the bench and Bernardo Silva came on. Um, so, uh, Martin, what were your initial thoughts? Obviously, it was 2-2. Um, the game kicked off. Uh, what were your thoughts on the starting lineup? Because I must admit, I looked at it and thought, yeah, I could. Well, I actually said it. The well, day you before. got it. You got it spot on. I got it spot on. I said, I think, I think this will be the team, uh, only purely because the way he rotates. But uh, uh, whether I was, whether uh, I wanted it to be that team is another thing. But I thought he would rotate. What were your thoughts when the team came out at the Etihad? They dropped an absolute. You know what? You reckon? Did you yeah. really? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I'm. I'm. And listen, people. Um. Look at the um, the lineup, and you think, you know, naturally I added, where's Mares? Where's you know, Sterling was back in. Sterling's not been the same, and I said it last night since that England fiasco right. got up Southgate. He's not been the same. Right. It's clearly affected him. Um, and Riyad Mares, you've got a guy who is getting better and better and better every single game. And we always say confidence, you know, the confidence will get built by him playing. And he drops him. And he'll probably put him back in tomorrow night. But my, my, my argument to that is this, Martin, and, that, and this is my argument to it. I'm just trying to counter, you know, trying to put in an objective sort of argument against what you've just said. I'm not that I'm disagreeing with you. But, you know, we, Pep is notorious for rotating players. We've, yeah. seen, yeah. we've seen Aguero, you know, hit seven, eight goals in three, four games and then put be put on the bench. Uh and Jesus starts. We've seen we've seen Sterling been rested this season, uh, when he's been actually doing really well early on. Uh, we've seen, you know, we've seen others doing the same. Rodri, when he had a wonderful game, next game, he gets rested. Is it the fact that are we going too overboard as City fans because of a last minute on goal by Fernandinho. Because if that was 2 1, we probably would have walked away going, we didn't play that great, but we got the three points. Because it was 2 2, last minute goal. Are we going over the top with it? Uh, and so, Marty, when I saw the lineup, I think on YouTube, I told you, I, I, I sent a message, I said, mm, David Silva, Gundogan in midfield. I don't like it. Yeah, they did that when I did the, when I did the live right. team news. Yeah, the I saw the line. I said, "No, nah, this is not going to turn out really well because I know what's going to happen. It's going to be too slow, too pedantic. We're going to be struggling. It's just not. Like, why not start with the team that we had last week? Why does he have to change a winning team? He, ne he, ne he never does, though. He, ne and he, he never did last year. Yeah, and, but, but and we, not... and all the year before, and we broke record after record. Yeah, and I hate and to he rotated. This up. But Liverpool don't change their team. I'm not bothered about Liverpool. I'm saying the argument here is you're, you guys are saying, I wish you would stick with the same team. We never did it last year and we never did it the season before. And we broke every record going. So what, what, what's suddenly different now? But I, I, I think that even if, let, let's assume that he didn't change last year, which he didn't change last year, we could have scored more goals, scored, got more points, be, played better. Right? If you keep that same team, think about Champions League Tottenham, right? Away at Tottenham. We, I was going mad. Because I knew what was going to happen. I knew we were going to either lose or tie that game, right? And then the next week plays against Palace and he scores, I think it was the Palace or somebody else, or it was at Bournemouth, I'm not sure, but I think we will win. I mean, you got to, you have to play the team that keeps winning. 
they win that week, reward them for that and keep them playing. Until somebody messes up, they can take them out. Yeah, but we've got loads of games. You can't keep playing them because what if they get to you? And we don't know. What if these players are getting to the orange red yeah, medical red. charts and they're going, well, well, you know, I think we really should be, you know, he's had four games on the run now. We, we, you know, we're playing every three, four days. We need this, we need that, we need the other. You know, we, we don't get that. We're not privy to that information behind the scenes of whether the medical staff are saying, I, I, well, you know, we're getting to a point now. We've got a game on Saturday against um, uh, Palace and we're playing Tuesday night away at Sheffield. <laughs> But then what I what I would have done is instead of playing David Silva again yesterday, play play Phil Foden. He has the energy, he has the, the drive. Yeah. He yeah, can yeah, compensate yeah. for that, right? You play David Silva twice in a couple of you know in a week. He's not going to be at that tempo, and they have Gundogan there as well, who's slow. And then you play Cancelo against Zaha. I mean, are you kidding me? <laughs> you know. So you know we know Walker can always bully Zaha. We know he always bullies him. Because it's faster, he recovers quickly. Yeah, but the thing with Cancelo, Cancelo's annoying because, like I said, one 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 game is amazing, the next game is awful. Then the next game will be amazing again. There's no consistency from the guy at the minute. Let let me just, I'll just I'm just I'm just flicking through. I'm just looking at some, you know, because we're talking here, which I think is a real, I think it's a good point because it's one that I think a lot of City fans argue and debate about, and you know. I'm not saying I'm right. You're not saying you're right. It's just a very good debating point. Uh, you know, people get, you know, if we lose or we draw, it's like, oh, we should have done this. If we win, nobody really says much about it. I've just picked out. Yeah, I agree with that. I've, just, I've just picked out a game here. And going back to the Burnley game, we had De Bruyne, Rodri, and David Silva in midfield. We won four one, and if you remember rightly, that game was a fantastic performance. Remember Rodri screamer? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, well, I was there, yeah. Yeah, next game, we play against uh, United. Picked exactly the same team. De Bruyne, Rodri, David Silva. And we were absolutely garbage. Absolutely garbage. And we got beat 2-1. So, what's what, what, what your comeback for that? I, don't, yeah, I can't explain it. But, but it, it, the, it the, the, this is my point. This is my yeah. point. It's like we can't say we we stick with a winning team. We stick. It, it'll, it'll work because we stuck. We stuck. We had a winning midfield when we went to Burnley. When we thought this is going to be a really tough game, and we bat battered them four one. I think the only the only data point that I see that's consistent for me over the course of two or three years that I can I can bet on is the fact that you start Gabby and Aguero. Whenever we do that, Andy, we are yeah. phenomenal. It, it, I remember right. that Liverpool five 0 game. Yeah, they say, well, that like, Mane got got sent off, but remember yeah. that Aguero yeah, scored yeah. before he got sent off. Yeah, yeah, was, yeah. The what? I mean, game. I'm, I'm I'm just playing devil's advocate with you here because it's <laughs> the, these are these are the discussions that you 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 you're all over Twitter, Carl. You know uh, yeah. that people people have, and and I just try to sometimes take take a step back and go. Well, hold on a minute here. We, we have played the same team two games running and we've been brilliant one game and absolutely garbage the next. So does it really add up that we should stick with the same team all the time when we've got so many games? It's just that, well, I don't a, know. In a way, Andy, you've just answered the question to why we're not going to win the league this year compared to last season. Last season, every single player was on form week in, week out. We're not right now. Yeah, well, we're just not. Um, yeah, we're, for what for whatever reason that is, I mean, I guess we don't know. Uh, Pep will probably probably know whether it's down to you know third year on the run of such high intensity for two years well, and just pressure. I don't, I don't know now, which is quite scary because I didn't realise this. You know, I've just pulled up the age of our squad. Yeah, and it's a lot scarier than what I thought it was. But that's only because we've got two or three yeah. very, very old players. Well, we've, yeah. we've got we've got three 34-year-olds, three yeah. 31-year-olds. Yeah. You've got 29-year-olds. We're not talking spring chickens here. Yeah. No, but, but, I, then, but, but then, it, but then on, on, on the flip side of that, if you if you look at the first-team squad and go, all right, we'll add to that Tommy Doyle, Taylor Howard-Bellis, yeah, Eric Garcia, they're not Phil, getting Phil, Phil. Well, they are getting minutes. They might not be getting loads of minutes, but they are getting minutes. You know, so that, it, it, um, uh, it's one of those that it might, it might, if you look at the average, I think the older players yeah, drag that down a bit. 
Yeah, I think the data is probably skewed because of Fernandinho, Aguero, and maybe one or two, and David Silva, for example. Well, I'll be honest, I thought David Silva on Saturday showed he was a 34-year-old. Yeah, but that we was said, not but, the but, David Silva. Yeah, now, yeah, but we, yeah, but hold on a minute, Martin. People have said that in previous games, and then he, he, he pulls out a, you know, a Villa performance and everything else, and everyone's back to, oh, he's, he's just absolute class. And it's like, you know, let's face it. I don't think I don't think many players turned up on Saturday. And, I, don't, Andy, I don't think anybody was fantastic on Saturday. And, Andy, I want to I want to pick I want to pick back on your point here. I think the the Villa game with David Silva was fantastic because he had Gabby on the left. He also had Mendy there, and they were working those triangles. Right. It was fantastic. Right. Yeah, maybe. Once you take out Gabby away, then the, all the pressure now comes on what's his name on um, on on Silva. Then he struggle. He seems to struggle a little bit, right? But Put that. Put somebody who has energy on that side with him. He he just flies. Who, Phil, who, Ford, Phil Foden should have been in that midfield on Saturday. Who? Um, I mean, one player that we know, and we're 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 only going to possibly see a couple of months of it in the coming months. Is uh, we know what David Silva was like with Leroy Sane. Oh, you know, you know, uh, and let's face it. We, we've we've missed Sane on that left hand side mass, yeah. massively and, and we know the amount of passes he put in behind the back for Sane to 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 assist um, for goals so i mean i'm hoping i'm hoping maybe i've just been a little bit biased because i love david silva but uh, uh, <laughs> i don't mind saying that um, don't say anything about david silva um but go back to the... about David Silva. No, you can't. No. Stones. No, 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 you can, no, 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 no. You can say whatever <laughs> you like about them. Um, right, first goal then uh, against Palace. Tosun, header. Uh, what were your thoughts on that, Martin? Cancelo and John Stones' fault. Cancelo and probably Gundogan and Bernardo Silva at the back post, both left uh, Tosun. Yeah, it, well, it worries me. Like I said to you on Saturday. We didn't just we didn't just lose out on one header. We lost two. Yeah, we lost two headers. The initial header to Tolson, it was unmarked. In fact, looking back in it, I didn't realise until I watched it back. They were they were queuing up at that back post. Yeah, there was two of them unmarked. Somebody's got to make someone. I mean, and we got away with one earlier, but when when um, I can't remember when Edison messed up. Um, well, there was one. There was one I remember because I was sat right near it, um, and it was the. There was a free kick, and I was looking at the uh, the back post. They were about twenty yards out, twenty yards outside the box, and obviously they were going to cross it. They weren't going to shoot. And I remember Bernardo Silva up against um, whoever it was, and I'm thinking, yeah. is, is somebody is somebody not going to look round and go, "Oi, what are you doing? Yeah. You get out there and let me mark him." Or our market, I think it was Cahill or somebody. Uh, and, and you could see Silver shouting to people, thinking, have I got a mark in? And suddenly, at the very last minute before the ball was played, there was a swap over. I'm just thinking, this should already be organised. Yeah. Who's picking up who, surely? And that is exactly what happened for the corner. You've got Gundogan and uh, Bernardo Silva at the back post, both of them ball watching and both of them walk out and leave Tosin completely unmarked. And he, you know, he finished it well. Carl? No, again, it was just, I mean, I'm, I'm watching at home and I'm screaming at, at the TV, like, why is Bernardo Silva, who's like, you know, five foot six or something, marking somebody who's six foot one? I mean, what, yeah. what's it? I mean, can't, you know, the, the Stones mark him or maybe somebody else who's a little taller mark him? Where, where's the organization? Yeah. It's frustrating. For, you know, frustrating. I know we miss Laporte. I know we, I, we th the person that we miss the most in the back is company. That leadership, that drive, that yeah. that organization of saying, you know, get the hell over here, you move over here. We miss that. Um, yeah, it's unfortunate. But it is what it is. And then uh, obviously the game wasn't. It wasn't great. It was a wonderful free kick by Kevin De Bruyne that hit the the, the crossbar, and uh, we all thought it was in, but it wasn't. And then right at the end, the man does it again. Uh, Sergio, wonderful ball by Gabby over the bat, makes it uh, one all on eighty two minutes, and then the eighty seventh minute. Uh, wow, what a cross by Mendy, who for me was garbage most of the game. But for the first time, he got a really good crossing, and what a header uh, by Sergio to make it two-one. Martin, yeah, it, it's the first time Mendy got a ball in. 
A well, prom- a de- a de- a de- yeah. decent ball, yeah. It, that was the Mendy of the first season when he was here. Yeah. Balls in, quick, pacer, right height. And again, Aguero's unmarked. You know, there was so, you look at every goal, it was just, it was poor, poor defending for everyone. Yeah, 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 there wasn't good. any good defending, yeah. any point of any goal. Yeah, good point. Yeah, yeah, it's a good point. No, it's a and good point. Not just us. Palace's defending was awful on both of them. Yeah. I thought, I, I, and yet, yeah, to be fair to Palace, I thought they defended really well over the, the 90 minutes plus. But uh, um, thoughts, finally, on the Fernandinho on goal on 90 plus minutes, Carl? I mean, what, when, when that... When that goal was developing, I was screaming at the TV, somebody take him down, somebody take him down, somebody take him down, right? Mm-hmm. Cancelo, take him down, take him down. It's two minutes. You take him down. Get a tactical foul. Take him down. Nobody did it. Yeah. No yeah. one did it. Yeah. But the, the, one thing, the one thing we get accused of by everyone in the world, and it's the one time you want to do a tactical foul, yeah. and we don't do it. I won't mind because the only person who got a yellow card in the game was from City was Mendy. Uh, so, you know, you would you would imagine if Fernandinho, because he did make a couple of tactical fouls in that game, um, you would imagine if Fernandinho had the legs and he was in that position, he definitely would not have been getting into the area without a shadow of a doubt. But a bit of naivety, but well, I don't know. I mean, the ball looks got... like there'll be no Mendy tomorrow, so we, we don't have to slag off his crossing tomorrow night. Well. Well, I think I, I'll be honest with you. I think after his performance uh, on Saturday, it wouldn't surprise me if Sinchenko comes back in. Uh, if I'm being honest, but uh, he, wasn't, he wasn't that bad, Andy. Well, he wasn't that oh, bad. Oh, listen, I, I, when, I, I, when, I, when you're when you're at the game, Carl, trust me, his hands was. You remember sometimes on TV, you only get the shots of what what you're seeing and what they show you. There was numerous times where he was stood on the halfway line during the second half, and his hands were on his hips. And he was blowing like mad right in front of Pep Guardiola. Are you thinking, you've not even done anything, mate. You've only just jogged about 20 yards. And he was it was like he'd, he'd just run a marathon. Um, I don't know whether his fitness levels need improving. And, and there's no excuse now. He's sort of seven, eight, nine, ten games into his comeback. So, uh, I don't know. I, did, I didn't think he was great. I thought his crossing was poor. Um, yeah, it was. Just, I know it's really, really poor, but the, uh, problem, the problem we have is out of the of the three left backs, he's probably still the still the best. I mean, yeah, 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 I, yeah. I agree. Yeah, I, and I don't I, want Chilwell. I do not want Chilwell. No, no, I don't want Chilwell. I mean, I, no, it's not good enough. I mean, for me, the way I look at City now is that any player that has to come in has to be able to fit into Real Madrid or Barcelona. It has to be. You can't go for Chilwell. He's not going to get in. Great, I need mean, quality. Okay, right. Moving on. Uh, obviously. Um, John Stones came in for an awful lot of criticism uh, on social media after the game. Um, Martin gave him a, a bit of grief, and I've seen many others, and, and, and everyone's attached to their opinion. I thought, I thought, and and, and I've, I, I replied, I thought he was scapegoated quite a lot um, on Saturday because up to the point of in the second half, he made a couple of dodgy passes over the top, which got cut out, and then. Of course, he should have um, he should have stopped uh, Zaha going through. Prior to that, he'd made some wonderful interceptions, some great passes, and things like that. And I don't know what are your thoughts. I know you know this is your opinion. Um, I just think he's getting a bit of a hard time personally off City fans, uh, but that's just my opinion. Um, uh, Carl, I'm going to come to you first. I mean, I, I think I'm I'm at the I'm at the end with Stones. To be frank, I really supported him. I really liked the guy, but it just doesn't have the aggression of a top class defender. And we just and the way we play, you need to be somebody who's tough and who's who good on the ball, but also tough in defense. It just doesn't. Yeah. I'd, I'd rather him get a red card be, for being tough than just kind of let the defender kind of get away because just just have to be tough. Just can't. Yeah. It's not going to help him. He seems to be a guy whose confidence falls once he makes a mistake. You yeah. can't do that at this level. You have to be confident in who you are. What do you think, Martin? What do you think is wrong then if, uh, you know, because, you know, let, let, let's not beat about the bush. Um, he's got a lot, a lot of criticism of City fans, uh, a section of yeah. City fans. Uh, some have supported him, like me. Um I thought that some of it was unfair, but that, like I said, it's every fan has their own opinion, and everyone's entitled to it. Um, what 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 has gone wrong with John Stones, and if it, if it's gone wrong, um, injuries, yeah. injuries. You've you've got to be honest. You know, he, he is 
Chat Rodwell Mark Two. Yeah. That's quite. I'm obvious. not. I'm not sure he's that bad. Well, well, he's he's getting close to it. Uh, he's injured again tomorrow night, so there you go. Um, <laughs> Do we know that for certain? Yes, Pep that, said that. Yeah, apparently him and Mendy are definitely out. Oh, okay. Pep's confirmed that. Okay. So um, th- th- that's because that's what I was just looking at. He's out with um, he, uh, Mendy suffering from muscular fatigue, and John Stones is out with a problem in his leg. Okay. And they're, well, they're, in, they're quotes. Right. Well, I mean, you're talking about John Stones. John Stones has been at City. This is his fourth year. Uh, That's my point. Yeah. Uh, he's played 118 times uh, in that time. Um, is John, here's a question. Is John Stones a better player than the John Stones at Everton? I don't... I, I see, I, don't, I can't work this one out because... I don't think Everton are a city. I don't think, you know, I don't think Everton played the type of football that Pep Guardiola plays and there's not the pressure of playing out. I mean, if John Stones wanted to just hoof it out and everything out, every time he gets the ball, then, you know, anybody could go, oh, yeah, he's been really good today. He cleared the ball and he did this and he did that and he, he didn't take any chances and he was really solid. But that's not what Pep Guardiola wants from his centre-backs. I'm sure, I'm sure it'd be far easier for him Whenever the ball comes near him, either play a simple pass or he boots it up 40 yards, you know, under a um, under a manager that wants to play that way of football. And okay, he could know, easily so, rose at it. I know that. He could easily rose at it. You know, I, I don't know. I, I'm not saying I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just saying I don't I don't know. I don't know what the answer is. Uh, with and it's, not, I, I don't. Well, it's not his fault the price tag either, but we're talking a fifty million pound defender here. Yeah, but I mean, um, you know, you could I, I could name you fifty players that have come into the Premier League for high prices and gone, yeah, so and what's happened to them and uh, you know, it's it's he can't he can't blame a player for, for how much it's but, you know, my not... issue with John Stones, it's not personal. I think he's a top, top centre-back at times. Son, last week at Villa, that was the John Stones that we all want to see. Absolutely. And, and, well, and well, well, well the, the, it is my, it is, here is my point. Here, this, is, this is the crux of my whole point, is how can he be absolutely wonderful? And everyone's raving about him going, that's the John Stones we want to see. And next week, he makes, he doesn't put in a tackle for a goal on ninety-four minutes, so, so, and suddenly and, now is the is is so he's Andy, not he's to... not pushed on. He's rubbish, and we need to get rid of him. So, as Martin said, there are snapshots of John Stones that I absolutely love. Yeah. The game against Chelsea in the Centurion season, his play, his game against uh, Liverpool at home last year when we won two one. Yeah. There are snapshots of his game that are absolutely fantastic. They are ten over ten. But on the other side, there are snapshots of his game that's five over ten. So he has to be seven over ten consistently. That's the issue. You know, you and I know that defending is not just about one game. It's about being consistent week after week, being a seven, being a seven and a half, being an eight, all the so, way. So, 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 considering okay, and again, I'm like I said, I'm just, I'm just gonna play devil's advocate. I'm just gonna make the point. So, Raheem Sterling was pretty poor in his first season at City, and he hasn't been great this season so far. So, he, uh, should we get rid of him? Because he's, no, no. he's he's been good in a couple of seasons, but two seasons he's been pretty poor. No, so so, should, so we, Ra- should we get rid of him? No, no. So Raheem Sterling has improved, right? He's improved, you know, for the last two years. Right? Yeah, but I, yeah, but he's not improved this season. Right now, he's in, no. He, but the first part part of the season he was good. First three or four months he was pretty good. He was breaking all records. He was scoring goals. Now he's hit a bad bad patch of form, probably because he's probably tired or something, or probably because of the England issue with Joe Gomez. Whatever happened. Does yeah, that so, does that does that not show a weakness mentally? It could be a weakness, yeah. It could be. It could be weakness. And I, I'm, I'm not slagging off Raheem, by the right. way. He, I love he, Raheem Sterling, but I'm just saying this is this is my whole crux of my argument is when it comes down to, you know, how how is football Andy, football he, football fans? His not question, just fans. Andy, his question: Would you be comfortable if John Stone was to lead the defense with uh, the Taylor Howard Bellis in defense against uh, Real Madrid in the Champions League final? Would you be comfortable yeah. right now? Yeah, you would. Yeah. Are you yeah. serious? Yeah, I'm, ser- I'm absolutely 100% serious. Yeah, I would. Okay. You're on a wind-up well, well, with that. You're on a wind-up no, no, with that. No, I, I am not on a wind-up. I, I am comfortable with any formation at the back. I just think that 
it gets over analysed, it gets overdone by City fans. Now, would you, if you said to me, would that be your first choice centre back pairing? Of course it wouldn't. Absolutely no chance. Would I be comfortable if we went in with Taylor Howard, Bellis, and John Stones as our centre back pairing against Real Madrid? Yeah, yeah, no problem. No problem with that whatsoever. As long as we keep the ball and we score goals, absolutely fine. If we get if we win three one, three two. Then absolutely no problem with that whatsoever. I, I, I do think you raise a point here, Andy. I think the point is we're not a defensive team. Our, no, we're, our, we're definitely not. We're definitely our, not. That's the point. Our game is an attacking game, and if we can have the midfield that protects the back four, we're absolutely fine. And that's the issue. We never even even FC Barcelona when Pep was there, well, they weren't a defensive team. Yes, they have to. Yeah. They were more of an attacking midfield creative team. That's that's been his game. So. So this is this is this is where I'm going. This is where you finally <laughs> you finally I've led you up the garden path like, yeah, where I want like you to go. And you've done it. And this this is this is where I want to go with it is that we don't play <laughs> we don't play that type of football. We play we play that we'll score more than you. We'll keep possession more than you. We'll have we'll have the ball in your half and you'll have less chances. The problem being at the moment is that we're conceding too many sloppy goals and we know that. But like you said, that is the pet way. Bayern outscored other teams, conceded goals. Barcelona outscored other teams, conceded sloppy goals. I, dis I disagree with that a bit. Because if you look at our defensive record, especially in the Centurion season, yeah. didn't we have the best defensive record? No, I, ne I never said conceded goals. I said we concede sloppy goals. But we're conceding no. goals every game now. Yeah, we are. I, I, all right, then. How many of those goals, then, how many of those goals are from the fact that amazing play by the opposition where you went, oh, wow, there's not a lot you can do about that. Oh, no, because I'd love to see the... the Wol uh, wolves, Wolves. The, exactly, the tri yeah. Triori goal, you go, yeah, that's a great bit of play. I mean, there's not a lot you can do about that. You know, Andros Townsend strike against Palace yeah. last year. The, the, I mean, they're, they're ones that, you know, there's not a lot you can do about it. But we are conceding very, very sloppy goals at the moment this season. And, and, and the big picture for me is after back-to-back -back seasons winning, after the 198 points, after the, the domestic treble, I mean, there will be a drop-off, right? There will, it's always of inevitable. Of course. There will of be a drop-off. I, I think our, for this year, if we can get ourselves mentally ready for the Champions League two games that we're going to play, hopefully we do well, and then the cup game, I think it's going to be a good season for me. Uh, absolutely. And I'm, I'm totally with that comment. Absolutely with that, um, with you, Carl, on that. I, I think, you know, the league's gone. We're, we're disappointed as fans because we shouldn't be that far behind. We should still be, you know, even if it's seven, eight points and you're thinking we're still in with a little shout, but we're not. We, we've not been good enough. Liverpool have been very, very good. This season very consistent, um, yeah. And there's not a lot you can do about. It. I mean, if you're just a, you can be a bitter City fan and sort of go, oh yeah, because no, of but this I, I, I'll tell you what I do want to say, and I'm sorry this is going to sound so controversial. Some of these slapped our City fans need to wake up and start realizing that we ain't Man United fans, and we ain't. Oh, we're not winning a trophy, so that's the end of us. Well, I mean, I mean, we're, I'm we're, so wound up with that at the minute. I mean, we're, you know, like I said on the last week, you know, we're we're playing Real Madrid in the next round of the Champions League. We're three one up going into the second leg against United. Yeah. Well, the chances are we should. I mean, with City itis, you know, we should we yeah. should go through to another Carabao Cup final, which would just be, you know, it's our second home, yeah. and we should really go through to the next round of the FA Cup and have a good run in that. So yeah. we could we could we could have two we could have two. Yeah. Cup comp domestic cup competitions, a double, yeah. and a good run to the semis or finals, or even win the Champions League. I mean, God, we can't win everything. I think it's like no. you know, you know, it's like Jesus Christ. Sometimes it's some of these kids, and you just think, oh, you know, go back 15, 20 years. This would have been an amazing season. Uh, and I, I know, I know, oh no, I know things are different. Yeah, I know. But. I, think, I, think, I think the issue was if Chelsea were the ones that were ahead in the league, I don't think people would complain too much. No, 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 no. It's a good point, Carl. It's a good point because yeah, it's Liverpool. That's, yeah, that's the issue. That's that yeah. is the problem. That, that yeah. Most people don't like them because of the fan base and the way so, the league sucks up to them. That's that's the issue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we we know that. Uh, I mean, you only have to look at the whole flair issue. I was listening to the radio this morning driving to the airport and I heard uh, something about 
people arrested in the game last night in the championship for setting off flares. And you think, well, there were about 50 of them outside Anfield yesterday. No police arrests. And it's it's against the law to set one off in a public place. But uh, it seems like for Is them... That- well, yeah, apparently so, yeah. Well, seeing as I had one set off next to me about an inch away from my head at Anfield, yeah, that's yeah. interesting. Well, hey, well, it is. It's Paris. And I think, didn't I send you a video of that as well? Yeah. <laughs> well, anyway, well, John Stones is going to be one that's going to be up for debate. Um, very quickly, you've got one minute each. Uh, the question to you, Carl, is... Um, should we sign a centre back, regardless of January being a crap window to sign centre backs? If you think we should sign one, and I probably know who the answer is, um, <laughs> who, sh- who should we sign? Why? You've got one minute. Uh, we should sign Nathan Nathan Aki. What? Uh, in, yes. Oh, 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 that wasn't the answer. I, was I know. I thought I thought it was Koulibaly. Well, I mean, listen. If you want somebody who's been in England, who knows English football, who's quick, who's fast, who can play with Laporte. Um, maybe you want to consider Nathan Ake. It's probably cheaper too. It's probably 50 million cheaper and younger. So the logic would be go for Nathan Ake because he I would don't know. Bournemouth won 80 million for the... Never going to get that. No, no, we'll never get that. No, no, we'll never get that. So for me, probably Nathan Ake. If you can't get Nathan Ake, then I would do Koulibaly. Okay, well, I'm, I'm with you. I've always liked for the last... 10 months been saying Nathan Ake should injury be going to City. Injury pro. Well, he's had an injury. Leave him alone, his young kid. Anyway, uh, Martin, centre-back. I know you're scrinier, aren't you? <laughs> scrinier or Ruben oh, Diaz or both of them. We're not going to... I'm on about now. We're not going to get them in January. I wouldn't well, I, I wouldn't mind this um, Torres Pau. No. At Villarreal, they're all talking about. Uh, well... Are we going to get him? That's the problem. It's January. We've got, what, 10 days, 11 days hey, left. Uh, is, you can't... I don't believe fully in this January. It's not a buyer's market. If you want uh, to put it down... People well, will... oh, oh, no. Don't, don't get me wrong. The, the only problem being is that... Let's let's imagine... take the take, Let's take the shrimp screenier thing. Let's imagine City go in and went, we definitely want him. How much do you think Inter Milan will add to the price to get it to, to let him go when they're in the Champions League? Uh, You're looking 20, 30 million extra. Yeah, they're out. Yeah, they're out. Yeah. yeah. You know, they, 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 somewhere they, it's got a buyout clause. Now, I don't know if that's right or wrong. All right. Let, let's imagine he did have a buyout clause. What are the chances prior to the buyout clause being activated? He signs a five year contract and uh, Inter, okay. and then suddenly they want 125 million quid for him. Well, because let's it, face it, like the, does, doesn't sign the, it. Play, players are in it for themselves. Come on, ninety nine point nine percent of the time they're in it for themselves and money. Why would they have a? Why would they get a five million pound signing on fee when they can have a twenty five million pound signing on fee? And that's why I'd be I'd be surprised if we sign anyone. But anyway, it's all up for debate. It will keep going. We've got ten days left of this uh, this uh, transfer window. We'll I don't see. see. I don't huh? see I don't see anything as window. Uh, uh, I'll be surprised if anything comes in. But you never know. Who knows? Um, I'd be well happy if we get Martinez and other players in the summer. And uh, we'll, uh, It's a podcast for another time. But anyway, moving on. Before yep. we finish, thank you, guys. You've got a final golden question, that, as we always do on the podcast. Carl, you can ask Martin one question. You can ask me one question. Martin, you can ask... Carl, one question. You can ask me. I don't ask the questions because I'm asking them. So, uh, Carl, over to you. Yeah, Martin Martin, and to Andy, what are you going to do to make sure the atmosphere on Champions League game day against Real Madrid is going to be exceptional? Who's that to? <laughs> to I'm, Martin. I'm hoping that's to Martin. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, I, I, well, what can you do? To make sure the atmosphere. Are you on about? Are you on about what can the club do? What? Well, what can the fans and the, the fans do to make sure that on that day it's a it's a din for for the club and for the players? Um, well, the the one thing they need to do is now. I'm hoping to do this starting next week against them over the road. It, yeah. it's, it's they need to get you know flags out. They need to get the big banners out. They need to get it's a night game. Do what yeah. we did a few years ago because it did create an atmosphere. You know, when, when they turn the lights out and um, everything else. Because the one thing Wolves do, and yeah, I know it shouldn't be about the pyro and everything else that goes on. 
But I'll tell you what, it's an intimidating thing when they're coming out and they've got fire going up in the air and it doesn't have G the fans up. It's just, yeah. you could hear a pin drop on Saturday with that PA system broke. You could hear a pin drop and you could hear it until, until Aguero scored the winner. That was the only time we got going. And and Mende, I'm sick to death for seeing players and the manager having to G the crowd up. And and then you stand up and you get told by people, sit down, I can't see. Yeah. It, yeah. It, it's, it's just not the same anymore. You know, give me main road. Any day of the week. Uh, well, you want me to answer that? Yeah, <laughs> yeah go on. Um, <laughs> but I, I'm not. I'm not going to answer about um, how to make it to things like flags and things like that. You know what I'll say to Manchester City: lower <laughs> your fucking prices of your tickets. Get proper yeah. fans there who can afford it, um, and they'll make the noise be- rather, than, ra- the rather than. Rather than, you know, 70 quid, blah, 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 for that. Most of them will be snapped up by, you know, tourists and things like that. And you wonder why there's no atmosphere by local people because they can't, with all the games that are coming thick and fast, they can't afford 70 odd quid for a ticket. Absolutely disgraceful, uh, in my opinion. So um, oh, uh, until, oh, until they actually do something about it, um, they'll never, ever, ever get the atmosphere. Never. Um, it'll be the same like it was outside Anfield yesterday I saw videos of um, a group of 50, 60 tourists from Asia uh, all turning up I mean how how have they got 50, 60 tickets for a a game like uh, Liverpool versus United and it's the same at City Uh, I'm sorry you know overseas fans you know what we do with overseas fans. We welcome them. We do everything with them. But when you start putting prices at 70, 75 quid for your average Mancunian or average sort of local Northwest person, yeah. where on the back of all of the other outlays that they have to just pay. Just after Christmas. Just after Christmas and everything else. You know, they're going to go, I'll watch it on TV. Uh, I'm not, I'll go to the pub with my mates. They can't afford it. I can't afford it. I'll have a couple of pints and watch it in the pub. And you're not going to get your hardcore fans that are going to make the noise and everything else. So, you know, it's, for me, it's down to City. It's not down to the fans. It's down to Manchester City. It's down to the powers that be. And it's down to greed, in my opinion. So, uh, it's something I'm pretty strong, I feel strongly about. I think it's wrong. Um, so, don't, for me, don't complain about it, Manchester City. Don't complain about it, Pep Guardiola. Don't complain about it, the media at Manchester City. Don't complain about it. The City fans know exactly what's needed and that is lower the bloody prices of the tickets and make it accessible for the average person on the street who goes to watch Man City. Anyway, that's my rant. Uh, Martin, <laughs> you've got a question. Oh, Sorry, I just, I love that. That was passion in a bottle, that. Just a uh, and yeah. question. And so. I totally agree with it. Stop, you know, it's great doing a quid for a kid for Fulham. And Port well, Vale. Yeah, yeah, of course it is. It's I mean, don't that. get me wrong. That's they're brilliant. absolutely, absolutely amazing, and they're, they're, you know, I'm, no one's asking for it to be a pound or five pound every single game. No. Pick no. and choose your games, but but I don't care. It, it, I don't care if they charge seventy five quid. I can I can afford it, but I don't care. It's when they come out and say the fans need to do this, the fans need to do that. Pep saying it in his press conferences. Oh, the fans need to be behind. Oh, yeah, make it reasonable. Make it reasonable. We haven't got the fan base. We haven't of a Liverpool United and, a, and some, of, some of the other teams that have been established for decades. We haven't. We simply haven't. We have to be realistic. But then when you add 70, 75 quid for a ticket or 55, 60, 70 quid for a ticket, you, you, you mark, you, you're actually, you know, you're isolating the, the average fan who will turn up, make an absolute racket and sing his heart out or her heart out for the well, whole... I can that, tell you know, now. I can tell you now. It, 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 I mean, you know, you know that I go away games. It, it's chalk and cheese. No, oh, away no, games. Of course, it is. We, you know, every, you every, every, Everton. Every time we go away, it's cheese. different. It is amazing. Me and you, Andy, we go away, and it is like it is just a din. It is nothing but a din. You stood up. Yeah. No one's telling you to sit down. Nothing new. You haven't got a steward coming over having a go at you. It's just become. Unfortunately, I hate to say this, but we've become the one thing we swore we never, we would never become. 
I mean, so, Mark, I, I remember when I came, I, I traveled down to, for two games. I went one away, one home. So, one was away, FA Cup. It was at Huddersfield. I think it was 2007. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, I was there on the away end, and I, I absolutely enjoyed it every yeah. single moment. And then I go to the game for the Champions League against Monaco, and I'm shouting. It's people attempt to sit down. I'm like, what the heck's going on? Come on, get I up. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I saw it in the, when we played Barcelona. I sat in my normal seat. Neymar and Messi came over to take a corner. I didn't see a thing because all I saw was flashing, selfie sticks, everything. And it was like, what are you doing? What are you doing? And I'm not saying, you know, day trippers or foreign fans are not welcome. Yes, of course they are. We love that. And you said we haven't got a fan base like Liverpool and United. I think we will do. But I think it'll be long after. Oh God! Yeah, 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 yeah. Of course, yeah, absolutely. Well, we have, we have, we, we'll we, have, we, we, we haven't got it now. No. And, and the point is, is that you know, it's not, it's not just solely down to day trippers and things like that. It certainly isn't about tourists because Liverpool created, you know, they can create an atmosphere on games like yesterday and our, you know, Champions League games. You say uh, and, that, and, but I've been in Anfield. No, 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 no. I said, I said about, I said about games like yesterday and games yes. like our oh, Champions yeah. League. I'm not talking about every week because we know that most of the time it's silent at Anfield, except for you'll never walk alone at the beginning. But, but I'm saying we, if you want to create an atmosphere, you need to make it pricing accessible for fans who are going to turn up and are going to make a noise. But anyway, we've got to move on. Finally, Martin, you've got one question. <laughs> Which manager from the 1990s would you take right now if you had to choose <coughs> one to manage this team and you think would do the best job? Well, you take, you're saying any manager or any manager from the sitting. 90s from when we had our dark days. Mm. So I'm talking Joe Royal, Phil Neal, Steve Coppel, the lot. Who, what it's got to be a city manager or any, a, any manager? No, it's got to be a former city manager. A former city manager. in those dark days. Who would you take if you couldn't have Pep? You, you can only choose those managers to take on this team and why. Me? Can I answer? Uh, Carl? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead, I mean, Carl. I may, yeah, be, yeah. I may be wrong with the time frame, but well, Kevin Keegan? Yeah, you can have Keegan. I'll, get, yeah. I'll have Keegan, yeah. I, I would take he Keegan. Was, he was 2000, 2001, but okay. just okay. in there. Yeah, that's that's what I... That's when I, I, just, I, I would take Keegan because of his energy, his attitude. Uh, I loved it. That that attitude of always winning, defying the media. I like. I love it. Has it got? To, has it got to be nineties? Did you say nineties or Kevin Keegan? I'll let you have. You know what? I'd, you know, under this team, I'd probably <sighs> Keegan. Yeah, because of his style of football. Probably Joe Royal uh, for me. Yeah. Or, or uh, if I could be really crude and go a year before, I'd probably go Howard Kendall. Um. Do you know? Do you know what? You know what I chose. Well, he, he was he was sort of eighty nine ish. I don't know. I brought I brought uh, Frank Clark. <laughs> yeah, and I'll tell you why, and you're going to laugh at me now. Yeah, go on, I will laugh. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I am going to laugh. Do you remember Frank Clark under Knott's Forest when he yeah, had his third yeah, 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 Frank yeah. Callimore, Brian Roy, yeah, uh, Ian Bone. I still I still take Keegan Royal and uh, Peter Reid over uh, Howard Kendall over. Uh, over Frank Clark, if I'm honest, but uh, yeah, <laughs> if it, if it this, with these with these players, I'd probably take I'd, I'd go with Keegan, uh, but uh, I, I did like Peter Reid. I, did, I obviously I liked Howard Kendall, but that was uh, the other one I was going to choose, Peter Reid. Yeah, maybe Reid or Kendall, but I don't. Well, I had three: Peter Reid, Brian Horton, or Frank Clark. Okay, well, that's a that's a very left field question, Martin. But um, guys, listen, all I want to say is a massive thank you. This is. The end of the podcast we've run over as usual like we always do um carl i want to yep. say a massive thank you for coming on buddy really appreciate it love it thank you and thank you for all your uh, contributions on social media and on uh, on the vlogs and things like that yep. martin cheers, brother. cheers yep. buddy thank you very much for coming on i'll see you very soon for the watch along you night. will, you will. I'll be around. Was going to do a vlog tonight, but uh, we've <laughs> we forgot all about the Premier. <laughs> we forgot all about the Premier League predictions, and it was like, oh Jesus, another midweek game. So we had to rush it through this uh, this yeah. evening too. We've got to the get... same again next week. We have got the same again next week <laughs> as well. Uh, but anyway, 
This is Andy from Man City Fan TV. This is uh, episode 11 of the podcast. I'm with Carl. I'm with Martin. I just want to say a massive thank you uh, to uh, all the uh, Man City Fan TV followers, subscribers, etc. for all uh, all of your comments and everything as usual. We're pushing on to that 12,000 subscribers, which is absolutely amazing. But anyway, you'll be able to check this out on YouTube. Uh, you'll also be able to uh, go down and download it on uh, SoundCloud, uh, it's free of charge and the links will be in the description below. But anyway, take care and we'll see you soon. Bye. Yes!